If you remember the summer of 1999, then you'll probably recall the pop hit Steal My Sunshine by the Canadian group Len. Hailed as a song of the summer back then, it was pretty much inescapable. But whatever happened to the group? That's what we're going to explore in today's video. Len would be the brainchild of a brother and sister named Sharon and Mark Costanzo, who grew up together in Montreal before their family moved to Toronto in the late 80s. Influenced by punk rock and hip hop, Mark started a punk rock band in 1991 and his sister Sharon would join the group a year later. But by Mark's own admission, his band's musical talent was pretty limited and usually resulted in the group's members smashing their instruments on stage since it seemed to attract more people. Soon enough, Mark grew tired of playing in a failing band, and it was during this time he bought equipment to create his own home studio and started recording other bands. He would soon meet other musicians including DJ Moves and D-Rock, who would become future members of Len. It was these chance meetings that led Mark to start creating his own beats, and soon enough Len would be born, and the group would release two rock and pop oriented albums in 1995 and 1997 on their own indie label Fun Trip along with a lone EP. According to Billboard magazine, each independent LP sold around 10 to 15,000 copies. Mark, who would go sometimes by the name The Burger Pimp, would draw on influences including the Beastie Boys, LL Cool J, and the Fat Boys. Mark would remark on the music scene in the late 90s, telling the LA Times, The reason why we listen to a lot of old school hip hop is that new school hip hop, besides the underground stuff, is so lost. Len's lineup would consist of Mark and his sister Sharon, along with a revolving cast of studio and touring musicians. The band would soon enough sign a deal with Sony's subsidiary work. Their time in the punk rock band I previously discussed would come in handy as the band subscribed to the punk rock ethos of DIY. Even after signing with the label, they had written in their agreement that they would direct their own music videos in addition to taking care of their art for their albums. The band would also launch a feature on their website in 1999 called Len TV that would allow fans to see old home movies of the group. Titled You Can't Stop the Bum Rush, their major label debut would be influenced by the 1987 Public Enemy album of a similar name. The group's major label debut would be recorded in Mark's home studio and contain their hit single Steal My Sunshine. The song was actually a sleeper hit and it would gain traction months before the album came out when it was included in the teen film Go. The soundtrack would contain songs from more high profile artists at the time including No Doubt and Fatboy Slim. Out of all the songs in the soundtrack, radio seemed to gravitate towards Steal My Sunshine. It would be LA radio station KROQ who would add the song to its playlist, dubbing it and I quote the song of the summer. Soon enough other radio stations started playing the track and the song would peak at number 3 in the US on the pop charts and number 9 in Canada as well as become a top 10 hit in several other countries. The success of the single helped the group sell 2 million copies of their major label debut and Len would achieve a rare feat by being selected by both VH1 and MTV as the new young act to follow. The label was so taken aback by the song's success that they actually moved up the release of You Can't Stop the Bum Rush and soon enough a video would be shot for the single. The success of the single even took Mark and Sharon by surprise. Mark would explain the origin of the song telling the Guardian newspaper, We were at this huge three day rave and I ended up partying, partying and partying. We went back to my house and Brendan Canning from Broken Social Scene was DJing and playing More 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 by Andrea True Connection. I ended up sampling it that morning and looped it. It sounded great. Somewhere in the next couple of days I recorded it. I know Derek Wibley from Sum 41 was there in the room when I put down the lyrics. It's just a song about what happened that night at the party he'd remember. Meanwhile Sharon would tell the Washington Post how her collaborations with her brother were pretty spontaneous recalling Mark just dragged me out of bed and into the studio one morning and said do you want to sing on this. Later he told me he was going for that human league vibe and had always wanted a song like that and as soon as we recorded the song it was done for me. We both liked it but I never thought about it again she'd remember. And she was pretty much right. Len almost forgot about the song for a year and a half and almost lost the track with Mark revealing to the LA Times, dude it was under my bed until the day we had to mix it. The reel was actually unwound under my bed with dust all over it. 
Brendan Canning of the group Broken Social Scene would tell CBC News that he did the spoken word part at the beginning of the song and received a check for $2,500 from the group's label. The video for Steal My Sunshine would have a whopping budget of $100,000, with Mark confessing a lot of it was spent on alcohol for the band. The video was shot over the course of a week in both Daytona Beach in Florida and a Venice Beach in Los Angeles. The original concept called for the group to ride motorcycles, but due to their alcohol consumption, they used scooters instead. The group's second single would be Feelin' Alright, which would feature a guest appearance by Poison guitarist C.C. DeVille, both on the song and in the music video, but it went nowhere. Steal My Sunshine would mark the high point for the group. Mark would share some famous last words with Billboard magazine in 1999, revealing, if we turn out to be a one-hit wonder, that doesn't mean we'll think any less of our music. We'll still be making beats and records years from now, even if the record company drops us. We'll still be making music, he'd say. It seemed like Len knew that they wouldn't have a very long career, and at their peak, Mark showed off his entrepreneurial side, launching his own record label and starting his own skate magazine called Vice. The group also grew tired of being on the road. According to Out Loud magazine, 80 dates into a 200-day tour, they cancelled subsequent shows and headed home to Canada, much to the disappointment of their label and manager. Lucky for Len, the success of Steal My Sunshine afforded them the opportunity to pursue passion projects, including running several businesses and making music at their own pace. Len would eventually get out of the recording contract with Sony, and soon signed a deal with DreamWorks, who according to Mark, paid them $750,000 based on a conversation he had claiming he had a whole album of hit songs, which in reality he never did. As Len readied their next album, The Diary of the Mad Men, DreamWorks folded and the album got stuck in limbo and wouldn't be released until 2005 on Mark's label. But it made no impact. Mark would announce on his MySpace blog sometime in 2008 that Len was finished. But they would end up re-emerging in 2012, releasing their most recent album, It's Easy If You Try. Since their last release, Mark has proved to have a successful career in the music industry, serving as a senior creative at EMI Music Publishing and signing a number of high-profile artists, including Sum 41. Mark would give an interview in 2020 where he discussed what he was up to, revealing how he now runs a publishing company named Inside Music Nashville, who owns the publishing of different artists that totals 35 million albums sold. Meanwhile, his sister appears to live in the UK. Sharon would tell The Guardian her feelings on the song looking back almost 20 years, saying, When I hear the song now, it makes me laugh. It makes me smile. It takes me back to that time. I know how I felt. When people play it, I dance to it. Two weeks ago, I ended up at a bar and it was karaoke night and Steal My Sunshine was in the book. So I said, let's do it. I'm going to London soon and if anyone wants to call me up, I'll and show up at their house and I'll sing the song. That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Rock and Roll True Stories. Take care.